We're back to say more about this matrix and what it says about these three vectors. I want to look at this question. Can I make a random W out of those three vectors? Now, geometrically, given that we know that they're coplanar, um, because, in fact, two of them are collinear, the answer is going to be no, but we want to see how we can get that purely out of the algebra. What we're going to do is we're going to take the same A matrix, the same coefficient matrix, and we're going to put it in something random on the right-hand side. Well, so let's say W is ABC, and we want to ask, can I create, can I find x1, x2, x3? These are just numbers, not vectors such that x1, v1, plus x2, v2, plus x3, v3, equals w. And we're really interested in why we must fail and exactly how we fail. And really, a more precise question is, which w's do we fail for? We don't fail for every single w. We should see that the w's we, we succeed for are the ones that are in the plane that contains these three vectors. Okay, so notice it's a little bit similar to the independence question. There we put a zero here, and we want to find anything non-zero to solve. Here we put something interesting, a non-zero vector, and we want to find something that solves the inhomogeneous equation. So, um, let's write that down. Let's just do the manipulations here, and then see what's, what's up with that. Okay, so I'm going to do those same reduction steps, but now I have to pay attention to what's going on on the right-hand side. I'm going to add the first row to the second row. So this is going to be A plus B. I'm going to subtract twice the first row from the second row. And so that's going to be C minus 2A. And then... I'm going to leave the first two alone. Let's see if you can read that, yeah. And I'm just going to add thri thrice, three times the first, this middle row. Oh, and I should have left more room in here. Let me just stick that out here, sorry. I forget that I need more room with these kind of calculations. So we're going to take C minus 2A, we're adding 3 times A plus P. And so that's going to be 3a uh, minus 2a plus 3b plus c, or a plus 3b plus c. Let's rewrite that with a little more room. And now what we want to ask is, is it guaranteed that I can solve this system? Or if not, when can I solve it? Now, one thing I'm not going to bother to do, I'm not going to bother to actually put it all the way into reduced row echelon form, because um, that's just going to make the right-hand side more complicated. And I just wanted the answer to a yes or no question. I didn't actually care about x1, x2, and x3 so much. And this, this is something to think about. This is a little bit of a sophisticated question. I'm not so much picking a specific ABC and finding x1, x2, and x3. I'm not so much interested in picking one particular w and then figuring out how to make it out of v1 and v2 and v3. That certainly is a good question. But it's a more sophisticated question, which is, I'm looking at which are the w's, which are the a, b, and c's, so that I can find x1, x2, and x3. And I'm not going to worry about exactly what the x1, x2, and x3 are. So what I'm really interested in is not actually solving this, but just fi figuring out when I can solve it. And this is the key. If that is 0, then it's going to work, because I'm going to have 0 equals 0 here. That doesn't bother me. And then I'm really going to have just two rows and three columns. I have a free variable. I have two leading variables or pivot variables. It's going to be great. I'm going to get an explicit solution. And x1, x2, and x3 are going to be something in terms of a, b, uh, a, b, and c. Actually, just a and b, as it turns out. But most of the time, 
I pick a random a, b, and c, a, b plus 3, b plus 3 is not equal to 0. And so most of the time I won't be able to solve this at all. And so there's, it's a moot point as to what x1, x2, and x3 would be. They don't exist. And what, what, what can I say a little bit more precisely than this? I can say that's a plane. That specifies a plane in three-dimensional space. The set of linear combinations of these three columns is exactly all vectors a comma b comma c that satisfy this equation. And that's not too shocking that we got an equation like this, because we know planes come with equations like this. One equation in three variables determines a plane. Okay, So we've got these uh, three vectors in three-dimensional space, but they're special because two are combinations of each other. They make a plane, and we have done one of our standard, utterly important transformations. What we took was an explicit or parametrized description of the plane. All things that I can make in this way. Some multiple of v1 plus some multiple of v2 plus some multiple of v3. That's an explicit parametrized version. It's great for creating stuff in the plane, but it's not so great for testing when is a random w in the plane. We actually had to do some calculations, namely our one and only method, our one and only method of row reduction, the only crank we know how to turn, and we got an implicit version. We're saying that if I take some w, a, b, c, and that that's, if that doesn't satisfy a plus 3b plus c equals 0, then it's not in the plane. So that one's bad. But this one, maybe, if that does satisfy, this equation, that is going to work. And so we've tr taken a parameterized version and turned it into an implicit version. That's always a really interesting thing to discover. And the thing to go back to, again, one thing I mentioned in class, is this row of zeros and the pivots. It's all about any qualitative question about vectors. It always comes down to make a matrix, find the pivot positions. Here's the pivot positions. There's two of them. It's got three rows and three columns. And the fact that I only had two pivots in those three rows and three columns is super important. The fact that I had only two pivots out of three columns was really significant back here, because that was what made this variable free, gave me non-zero solutions, and told me that these were linearly dependent. They, that some of them were redundant. I could play them off against each other to get zero. The fact that I have two, only two pivots in two rows here is what made a row of zeros, and that's what made it not true that every w could be solved for. That's what meant that the span of these vectors, the set of vectors created out of them, is smaller than it might otherwise have been. Three random vectors in three-dimensional space would usually be independent, and would create, all, a, as their combinations, it would span all the three-dimensional space. These guys were special. G again, and for a very, very special reason, these were collinear. And um, so they didn't span, and they're not independent. And it all had to do with the pivot positions. Whether there's an, a pivot in every column, that turns out to have to do with independence. And whether there's a pivot in every row, that has to do with spanning. OK, so that's one more example about these ideas.